Hello, I'm Gina and welcome back to my studio. In today's video, I'm gonna be tackling a project from another crafter. And this is Bentley House Mini's filing cabinet. And uh, Aira has just released a free printable version of it. So thank you, Aira, I really appreciate that. And I thought I'd give it a go because I don't have, like, I don't have a laser cutter and I also, I'm based in New Zealand and so buying the kit from Bentley House Minis, it just isn't worth it. So having the file, I was really keen to see how it would come together by just actually cutting it out by hand, very carefully cutting it out by hand, and just to see how well the whole project would come together. So let's get started. So to begin with, I have printed off the pattern onto some A4 paper, just as plain copy paper, and I've got myself a piece of mat board. I'm transferring all the letter details into the middle pieces of each of the different pieces, and then I'm going to cut them out into groups. And I'm going to use a glue stick. Uh, the glue stick that I've got is actually quite cheap, and it's a bit rubbish to be honest, but it's actually perfect for this project because I do want to be able to peel this paper off the mat board at a later stage. Um, so knowing that this is um, not the best tackiest glue uh, is perfect for this project. So I'm just going to work my way around cutting out some groups of these different pattern pieces and then cutting them out of the mat board. So thank goodness for having some glue that doesn't actually work that well. So uh, in this process I actually have Aira's video up, instructional video up, to work out how to put the project together and I actually followed the video rather than the instructions that came with the file. Um, I did this just because it was easier for me to follow something than to read it but everybody's different so use the technique that works with you. So just following the instructions by gluing these pieces to the very back and then starting with the two side pieces and then I also glue the top pieces, top and bottom pieces into place and then I just set that aside to dry. So once that glue is all dry and pretty much set up, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is putting on the front face of the cabinet. Now it's starting to really look like a filing cabinet at this point, which is fantastic. And every piece is fitting together beautifully. So all of the pattern is just so easy to use and very easy to copy and cut out. Um, so moving on to the drawers, there's two drawers that are operational I suppose you could say as well as two that are fixed which just basically have the drawer fronts on the front of them. Now at this point I didn't realize but I am actually gluing one side of this drawer piece upside down which actually doesn't bother me in the end but um, I didn't realize it until it had all glued up nicely and I'd actually kind of started to put the whole cabinet together but 
never mind. Uh, so I'm just going to work my way around, gluing the two side pieces together, the back, and then following up with the front piece as well. So I just let everything dry up a little bit more with the glue and I've just set everything in place and just made sure that it all fits nicely together. And now I'm just going to work my way around and glue the false draw fronts into place and just making sure that they do all line up with the other two drawers that do move in and out. So I just take some time to do that. One of the other steps in this process is to glue a piece of uh, cardstock on top. I am going to be painting this and while it will have some things on top of it, it will be actually seen. So this is a step that Aira recommends um, in her kit and where, as well as a strip around the top and the bottom of the same cardstock to make, give it sort of that metal cap type of look. And this is when it really does start to all come together nicely. So I'm actually going to be putting this cabinet into Gomez's office in my Adams family build and so therefore I'm actually going to be painting the cabinet black. I was going to make two of them but actually when I put this into the project one is actually enough for the space that I've got which is great. So I'm just going to work my way around and I'm going to give it two coats of black paint. Moving on to creating the handle and label details, I'm just layering up two pieces of uh, um, cardstock and I have actually marked them out where to bend them so that all of the handles end up being the same shape. So just with the two layers of cardstock glued together, the glue does soften the card ever so slightly and it just makes it a little bit easier to bend. And then just working my way, creating some sort of um, creating the handles and some plates for it to fix to the drawer. So there we go, you can kind of see it there, my fingers are in the way, but um, as I'm just trying to shape it into place. So I'm just going to do that and for the rest of the handles. For the labels, I'm actually going to use my Cricut because they are so tiny and there was, well I probably could have cut them out by hand, but I thought, why not? Why would I, if I can use my Cricut machine? So I'm just going to create some labels just using two different shapes and um, cutting out the middle piece and then I'm going to cut that out onto the cardstock. So I'm just going to reduce the size down and cut a number of them out. They are quite thin around the edges. I guess if I probably did this again I'd make them a little bit thicker but they still work out perfectly fine and then I'm just going to yeah just reduce these down and then cut them out.
I'm just going to paint the handles in a silver metallic and I'm leaving it white underneath. I'm not worried about putting a darker base coat underneath it. Sometimes metallics need a bit of a, a darker base coat but I'm quite happy with just leaving it white. And I've also done the labels, uh, painted those silver as well while they've been on the mat that have just come out of the Cricut machine. And as I'm peeling this off I can see that it's was probably a little bit thin each one of the labels but I did manage to get four out of the all of the ones that I created so thank goodness I actually ended up by cutting out more than I needed and then once I've done that I'm just going to glue it to a piece of card and just so that it gives it a nice solid backing and then once that's sort of set up and dried off a bit I'm going to cut them out into into shape. Once I'm happy with those, I'm just going to start gluing the handles and the labels onto the drawer fronts. And what I want to do here is just make sure that they uh, line up as best that they can. I'm just going to eye this up to make sure that they all line up, otherwise it could look a little bit off skew. And doing exactly the same thing with the labels. So I'm really happy with how it's sort of turning out. But there's one final step that I want to do before this is actually finished, and it's to give it a dry brush. I'm actually giving it a dry brush with the silver, the same silver that I've used for the handles and the labels, because I want to give it a bit of a worn metallic look to make it look like the drawer is actually made of metal and it's been scuffed and well used over the years. And so once this final step is done, I'm pretty happy with how it's all turned out. But we're not done yet and so one of the things that I've been wanting to do for a very long time is to create some swords in Gomez's office and these are the ones that have a really curved blade and for the for a very long time I had no idea how I was going to make them and so with my recent experiments with polymer clay I managed to find some sort of silver metallic clay this has kind of got a little bit of a sparkle in it and so I thought, well, why not give that a go and see if I can make these curved blades out of polymer clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through and do these in pairs. And I'm just doing some small snakes of clay. And then what I'm going to do is get my craft blade or exacto blade. And I'm just going to cut down on an angle on each side of that snake of clay to give it a really nice sharp edge and I'm going to do that on both sides of the clay and then once I've done that I'm going to curve the piece of clay oh, I'm actually going to actually bring it to a tip first uh, or point point of the blade first so once I've got these two pieces in place and then I'm just going to uh, just bring the knife blade I guess you could say to a nice little point and then just curve it and I'm going to do this there's quite a few different blades on it so as you probably would have seen from the thumbnail and so yeah I'm just going to work my way through and create these I also want to create some additional details so my thought process here is that if I can create all the different pieces and we've got some help from our supervisor if I can create all the different pieces um, individually then once this is baked I can glue them together so I just want to create these little pieces that sort of go between the blade and the handle um, I'm not really too sure what they're called is it called a hilt anyway and I've also got some brown um, plain brown polymer clay as well just and I've just created some snakes of clay and these are going, I'm going to cut these down to create the handles so once I'm pretty happy with those these have come out really well I'm just going to pair these up 
and then I'm going to work my way through and just cut these little snakes of clay down to size put and glue those to the top of each one of the handles and then also oh sorry each one of the blades I should say and then also cut some of the brown clay down to create the handle and I'm going to do that on all of the different blades. I'm really stoked with how these have turned out but one more step before we can actually glue them into place and that is actually weathering them a little bit or to give them a little bit more aging so I'm just using a mixture of black paint um, black and brown paint I should say and then also I create a little bit of a wash on it as well so I just wanted to create these two blades just with a slightly different handle color and then I'm just going to go over them with a wash which is basically the same color just watered down with a little bit of water and then I just rub that off and then that creates a nice patina on the blades. So there we go, it's all finished and I am absolutely stoked with how it's turned out. The little drawers come out which is absolutely awesome and I've also turned around the Adams Family Project which you can see behind me and now we just need to put this into place. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have come this far please consider hitting that like button, it really does help the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and turn on that bell notification. I'm really trying to push the boundaries, well, my boundaries actually, but hopefully it's enjoyable for you to come along on this journey with me. So until next time, I'll see you then. Bye for now.